Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. As you know, we are huge Lamborghini enthusiasts on this website. Uh, the car you're looking at here is a 1967 uh, Lamborghini 400 GT 2 Plus 2. Andrew Omanowski, you've met him before. He's uh, president of Lamborghini Club. Andrew, come on in here. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, Jay. You know, Thank the biggest you. gripe people have about uh, these exotic cars, nobody drives them. You put like 100 miles a year on them. Nobody ever uses them. This car has over 250,000 miles on it, which is a testament to the build quality and of course to the owner, Jack Riddell, who is, uh, who's owned this car since 1972. Jack, come on in here. Jack, how you doing? Doing good. Fun to be here. Jack, you got this when you got out of the Navy, right? Uh, actually, I bought this when I was in the Navy. In the Navy. I was and stationed at Seal Beach when I bought now, it. Now, John Paul Jones was not involved. This, no, is, this is after John Navy Paul Jones. The Navy name was yeah, John, strictly coincidental. Yeah, John's been around for a while. <laughs> it's a beautiful car. It was a used car when you bought it, right? Yeah, one owner. It, uh, was, I bought it in Seal Beach. I saw a little ad in, the, in a four-page newspaper right mm -hmm. there in Seal Beach. and I'd always been in love with these cars. I'd driven a 350 one time. and. The guy, we went back and forth, I had an E-Type Jaguar at the right. time, not a very sensible family car guy. What did this go for in 1972? Uh, I got it for $6,000. Six, well, that was a lot of money. Yeah, it was, for me. Yeah, yeah. it was for me. Well, that was a lot of money in 72, because most exotics, I mean, new Ferraris and new Lamborghinis were probably fourteen to 18000 I think so, yeah. So that was, that was not an inexpensive car even then. Mm -hmm. And new, in 67, this car would have been what? About 15.5. About 15.5. Yeah. So, and of course, came with air conditioning. This one had it, yeah. Yeah, five speed, mm -hmm. four liter engine. Uh, if you know anything about the history of Lamborghini, you know, Lamborghini set out to outdo Ferrari. He, you hear all the stories right. about uh, he, wasn't, he didn't like the way it drove and the clutch and all this kind of stuff. But basically what he wanted to do was build a more refined Italian car that you could use as a high-speed touring car that wasn't necessarily a race car, but was fast and handled, but mostly was quiet and comfortable. And this was this sort was of the it. personification this of that. <clears throat> yeah, well, 250,000 miles. That's See, that's what I think is great. And this was your everyday car. Yeah, I drove this thing, basically it was the car. When I was in the Navy, that was it. And I made a lot of round trips to Vallejo and San Diego. And I've been on every uh, Lamborghini Club event since about 1981, I think. Now this is, I'm guessing, probably the highest mileage or at least recorded mileage Lamborghini out there. Would you say so, Andrew? I'd say by far. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've seen few cars that have 100,000 miles on them. Yeah, most Lamborghini people wise. do. Well, that Countach has got close to 80,000. Oh, wow. So that's getting up there. Yeah. But uh, you hold the all-time record here. And uh, beautiful car, the Barani wire wheels. Uh, any modifications? I see you put updated speakers, probably. I got a more modern radio, and I stuck some speakers in there. You can hear it. When you're on the road uh, with the windows down, you might as well leave the radio off anyway. Yeah, right? yeah. You can hardly and, hear anything. And how good was the Italian air conditioning in 1972? Actually, this was a very good air conditioning. It was a good yeah, unit, the huh? Boletti, yeah, uh, has a mini York compressor and okay. uh, two condensers that are hiding behind the headlights. That's how they shoehorn them in there. Let's open the hood and see what yeah, she looks sure. like. It's also got an aftermarket ignition system. Yeah. Wow, very nice. I got tired of two distributors. As you can see, it's... Uh, well-used automobile, well-maintained, that's what I like. I mean, sometimes these show cars get a little annoying because everything is so perfect, the owners are afraid to drive them. You've updated, you got an MSD yeah, ignition. Yeah. And I put a single distributor in. I've got the original distributors, but right. it rides well. If you're going to drive a car, you might as well do what I did. Right, right, right. And everything, everything here, obviously, stock. Doesn't look like the car has ever been in an accident or been hit. Oh, I had a guy back into the front one time. Yeah. Other than that, no. And speaking of that, here's something very rare. I've never seen this. Uh, they only built a few cars. And this is factory, this little... Uh, oh, yeah, the brush beater. The bumper, the cow catcher, whatever yeah. you want to call it on there. How many cars they do with that? According to Valentino Galvoni, he said they had six cars that came out with this particular setup. That's the other cool thing about Lamborghini. Uh, Valentino Balboni, who's, who he's been to the garage, too. Here's his picture. Here he is. Uh, he test drove every one of these cars. And he's just about, I think he's like a year older than I am. And he probably remembers driving this car, doesn't he? Well, he remembers a lot of those cars. Yeah, it yeah, surprised yeah, me. Yeah. Because how many of these did they build? Uh, 229, okay. I think, yeah, 239. So, so they're, like they're pretty rare. And for the longest time, I would say for the last go back five years, 10 years after that, they were pretty reasonable. Now everybody's starting to realize mm. uh, what uh, sort of jewels they are and the prices are going, yes. going a little crazy yeah, going through up. the roof. So, well, And you're still making payments, right, from seven No, years. actually, I finally <laughs> finished it off, me and the credit union. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, is that the original windshield too? Uh, that's a, that's the replacement. Okay. There's a guy in Finland that actually makes these. Things. Okay. Because I was going to say, 250 miles, hardly any chips no, at all. I've, I've got the original. It's yeah. all pockmarked. But see, that's what's fantastic. And how many times have you rebuilt the engine? Five, I think. Five times. I count. Yeah. Jack is is, is an owner and a mechanic who really gets his hands dirty, and really gets involved with the cars. You know, nowadays you meet so many guys who buy these cars and know nothing about them. Jack not only rebuilt the engine, has written a book. On how to do it. On how to do it. <laughs> Is this available to the general public? It's, it's online. You can download it through the Vintage Lamborghini Garage. That's okay. the website, the forum that we have. Okay, Vintage Lamborghini Garage. Okay. Yeah, you can do a Google. It yeah, well this is invaluable because just there's all sorts of tricks and tools and things you need to put one of these together. This is basically the same engine that's in my Espada and uh, early Countach's as well. Same thing, yeah, with, the four liter. With the side draft carburetors. Yeah. Uh, how does she run on modern gas? Any problems? Uh, well, I had to change the valve seats. You know, the okay. original valve seats were soft and they had leaded gas, it wasn't a problem. Right. But they got beat up when they took the lead out of the gas, so we have, nowadays you have uh, steel, the hard seats. Good, but that's really the only, it runs on 91, right? Yeah, 91 octane, yeah. I, Put the aftermarket fans on mine. I think you did that to your car also. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nicely done. The original fuse box. Looks like you got all the original wiring there. Yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's yeah. a little scary sometimes. Now, do you put a, uh, you have a battery disconnect switch? Uh, basically, I just go ahead and pull one of the, pull the ground lead off the battery. Oh, okay. That's my disconnect switch. Because I always find with these old Lamborghinis, Italian wiring, you know, a couple of decades of wires rubbing Rolling. against the body, going over bumps, doing this. You know, people don't think wires move, they do move. And especially in a car like this, you're just doing this and sooner or later that insulation is going to wear and you're going to have yourself an electrical fire. Yeah. So it's always good to, uh, to do that. Andrew, tell us how this engine was different than the Ferrari engines of the period. Well, this was developed by an ex-Ferrari engineer that Fruccio Lamborghini uh, recruited. And it uh, had a same, you know, That was Bizzarini. Yeah, Bizzarini. Bizzarini. Yeah. yeah, he was here at the shop as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was an honor. He was here about 15 years ago. That was quite a... Mm -hmm quite a trip to have him come by. Cool, yeah, he designed, you know, under, uh, you know, Fruccio hiring him, um, a 60 degree V12 with dual overhead cams. You know, at the time, Ferrari just had, you know, a single overhead cam uh, head engine. You know, this provided a little bit more control over the valves and provided more horsepower for the Lamborghini car. The prototype engine that they had designed for the series of cars was 350 horsepower. Right. Now, I believe this one has, uh, 340 horsepower, Jack? 340, no, it's three, well, yeah, 340 at uh, mm. 7,000 RPM. Yeah, yeah. And 340, although in today's world of Z06s with 650 horsepower yeah. and whatever, doesn't sound like a lot, but back in the day, oh, that yeah. was very, very impressive. Yeah, with carburetion. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And it was real horsepower. Uh, you know, most, like the Jag always said it was 265 horsepower, mm. probably closer to 180. I'm probably right. getting a lot of letters on that, but. A lot of them never dynoed out like that. These these had the real 350 horsepower. And I said, the very versatile engine was in this, was in the Mura, was in the Espada. Yeah. In fact, they built this engine for almost 50 years. It's not until just recently. Yeah, the same basic design same carried basic all the way design. through the Mercedes. So Lago. that's pretty amazing. Much like the uh, first 32 Ford V8 or the Chevy uh, 265 from 1955, this yeah. has a 50-year history. So. Yeah, even uh, in 1966, when this was reviewed by Road and Track, yeah. they called it the finest road car they've ever driven. Yeah, I remember. You know, which says a lot. Department of Defense, that's pretty cool. I still do some part-time work for the U.S. Navy. Oh, okay. You're not the guy that got Bin Laden, are you? No, 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 no I wish. <laughs> but see, he wouldn't, he wouldn't tell us if he was. No, so that's a, It's a secret, yeah, yeah. Now, you had some trouble getting in here today. What happened? Uh, the gear shift lever came out in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to shift gears and I ended up with this, uh, you know, this thing in my hand. But well, you pulled over the side of the road and you fixed it. No, actually I didn't. I just plugged it back in and okay. kept fishing that's around until I found a that's gear. That's the old Navy guy way. <laughs> just stick it back in there and start shifting again. Exactly. That's exactly what happened. Well, it's a beautiful, beautiful car. Take us through it here. Let's see. This is a Turin body, correct? Uh, this is actually Marazzi. Oh, Marazzi. Uh, when Turin went bankrupt, Marazzi oh. came along oh, and uh, started okay. building. But it's basically a Turin body, except it doesn't have the... Uh, it has aluminum trunk and aluminum hood, but everything okay. else is steel. Okay. Original color? No. It was originally a dark red. I came as close as I could. I see. Okay. I did this in my garage. And of course, one of the most beautiful exhaust systems. I always remember these when I was a kid in high school, the way they stuck so far out and had that, that just that tone. What, what exhaust is, is that an Abarth? It's actually, uh, yeah, it is. Abarth made the exhaust yeah, system. Yeah, yeah. The Abarth always yeah. had the best sounding exhaust system. 
And obviously you've had the interior done as well, right? Yeah, this was redone at, uh, in San Diego. A guy named Louis Mesa did this. And the passenger stays cool. You got the air conditioner right there. Yeah, and it works. Like I said, yeah. it cools pretty good in there. Yeah, very nicely done. Is that the stock Lamborghini steering wheel? Uh, yes, I've had it rebuilt. I love the sort of Art Deco look on the gauges. Well, it certainly doesn't look like 250,000 miles. Original transmission as well? I rebuilt several times. Okay, and it's a five-speed. Five-speed. Which was pretty rare back in the day. Most cars were four-speed. So when this car came out, it was pretty advanced. You know, five-speed, that was something unusual. Ferraris were four-speeds, mm -hmm. I still believe, at that point. Four-liter, V12, uh, very impressive. And the braking system also had the dual servos in the trunk. Oh, okay. The dual uh, lockheed Yeah, servos. yeah. Actually, yeah, know. yeah, very nice. Single windshield wiper, which is kind of cool. Yeah, but some of them had two, some of them had one. I don't yeah. know where they made the distinction there. There are none of these two cars alike. There's even part six of them alongside each other and find Yeah, there's things. always some. Well, that's what you get with hand built automobiles. I always like this sort of detail yeah. here. Let's fire it up and see what it sounds like. As you can see, very nice sounding exhaust, nice and mellow, not overly loud, because this is a, a grand touring car. That's what it was meant to be. But back in 1967, this is about as exotic as it got. They were reliable, they were good handling cars, and uh, they drove Ferrari crazy. You know, when this came along, it made Ferraris better because it gave them some real competition. Just as when the Dodge Viper came out, Corvette could no longer continue with their 350 horse Corvette. They had to come out with the Z06. So competition breeds, uh, well, just makes better cars, basically. I always love the script here, Lamborghini 400 GT 2 plus 2. And uh, if you can get two people in the back of that, you're a better man than I am. But uh, it's kind of two plus, two little people. No, it's got no exterior handles here. No, you just, there it is. There you go. And a nice size trunk. Up until a couple of years ago, these are pretty reasonable. 50, 60, 70, $80,000. Now they're $250,000, some even more than that. That's why you want to sort of, if you see something you like, buy it now, because it ain't going to get any cheaper. Heated windscreen, heated uh, yeah, screen. That was, uh, that was pretty unusual in exotic cars back in 1967. All these things we take for granted now were uh, really quite rare. These windows open up here. Yeah, they got the little flip. Yeah, we'll flip here. Yeah. So you can draw a little red label. Let's take it for a ride, see how it goes. Oh, great visibility in this car. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's not like a Countach or a Miro. No, a lot of greenhouse here. This is a true grand touring car. I think it's a great looking car. This is one of those cars that I think it could fit into almost any period. You know, some cars go out of date very quickly, but this, uh, this is sort of a timeless design. Plenty of power. Quarter of a million miles, that's a lot. <laughs> I know 20 Lamborghinis that don't have that much mileage on them combined. You know, it kind of proves that old adage that uh, using a car a lot is better than hardly using it at all. I think that's true for these cars, yeah. especially. Well, you've got plenty of power. Yeah, it's not bad for an old car. Well, very nicely. Because of air conditioning, there's no reason why you couldn't use this car all the time. You know, most modern steering wheels are so thick. I like a nice, thin wooden wheel. It has a nice feel to it. Brakes nicely. The power assist to the brakes is in the trunk, which is a little unusual. Let's take it up on the freeway, see how it goes. You put this thing in fifth and at 70, you turn it, nah, barely 3,000 RPM. You know, the best way to appreciate these kind of cars is when you see them in relationship to other cars on the road. Because when you see them parked in a garage in a museum, of course they're impressive, but when you see them out on the highway, then they really stand out because they don't look like anything else on the road. And this road is especially bad, very bumpy yet, no vibrations of the steering wheel, no shimmy, no shake at all, no cowl shake. Handles very nicely. You have to kind of understand these cars in the time that they were built. 
Now, right now, the biggest builder of V12 engines is Mercedes-Benz. But they weren't building V12s. They weren't even building V8s when this thing came out. So only the Italians and maybe uh, one or two others had V12. So a V12 was really something unusual. It's so turbine-like. It's almost like a jet engine. It's so smooth. Jack, thanks for letting me drive this. Hey, my pleasure. Hope you enjoyed your ride in the uh, highest mileage Lamborghini. This thing's got almost as many miles on it as Jack. And Not look, quite. and it looks a lot better, too. Look, look what kind of shape this is in. And then look at Jack. So that just goes to show you. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's kind of fun. And it proves you can use an exotic car every day and put high miles on them. And it's no different than any other car. Enjoy them. Yeah, enjoy them. Have fun. Jack, thanks again. Thank you. And Andrew, thank you as well. See you guys next week.